Welcome to the Practice You podcast. My name is Elena Brower. Together, we'll explore and enjoy content and conversations around mastering transitions. In our relations, our wellness, our careers, our families, and especially in our missions and visions. You are invited to learn and love and listen with me. Welcome to Practice You. Welcome back to the podcast. I have the great privilege of being here today with Lauren Handel Zander, who is not only my coach, not only the person who got me started on the track that I am on for the last 10 years, but she's the co-founder and the chairwoman of Handel Group, which is an international corporate consulting and life coaching company. And it is no small thing, the reach and caliber of work that this company does. Handel Method is taught at over 35 universities and institutes of learning globally, including MIT, Stanford Business School, NYU, the NYC public school system. Hey, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you're also the creator of Inner You, I-N-N-E-R-U. And if you're listening to this and curious about Lauren's work, you're going to write down Inner You, I-N-N-E-R-U. And you're going to look for a little discount on that course, which is changing lives at handelgroup.com slash Elena Brower, because I get to give you a little discount. We are here to talk about that. We're here to talk about your book. Maybe it's you. Mm -hmm. We're here to talk about the fact that you taught me that maybe it was me. And <laughs> <laughs> we're here to talk about habits. We're here to talk about keeping relationships fresh, mm -hmm. uh, accountability, promises, maybe some parenting. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you taught me that it was me. You led me towards, weirdly, you led me towards my sobriety. Right. It's the weirdest thing ever because <laughs> I was, I didn't want you to go that far. Because she doesn't want me <laughs> to be sober. <laughs> Sorry, I really do, but I yeah. really don't. <laughs> I am that girl. I cannot tell a lie. That is my method. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I, I, I keep promises and I believe in keeping promises yes, and I yes. believe in being true to yourself. Yes. And so I am on the other side mm -hmm. of the tracks. <laughs> I am not on your side of the tracks. I get it. I would go if I had to. I do yeah. get you do. And yeah, it I go, had to. It, well, and it really is what you teach. Yes, I am not, I am not a breathing, teaching yoga lady. No. No. I'm not trying to be. Right. I'm thrilled you are. Yeah. And it yeah. makes a lot of sense with totally. what you're out to teach. Totally. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we're two kids from Long Island. <laughs> the two of us grew up about 15 minutes apart oh, from one another, did. even though we didn't meet. We've even we were... made out with the same boy. We did make out with the same boy. <laughs> um, we didn't meet until we were 30, late 30s. Yeah. Yeah. But we've really been within very close proximity of one another forever. Yeah. I think I want to start with habits because mm. I think a lot of people are interested in the work that you do regarding how to design their lives, mm. how to, you know, human better. Mm -hmm. um, and if human were a verb and cueing my good habits and putting friction between me and my bad habits mm. was something that very early on in my work with you mm. was pivotal to me. Mm hmm. Um, and I thought it might be interesting just to hear you talk about the evolution of that aspect of the work, because I think it does pertain to so many and definitely to the, to the listener today. Mm. So if you're real, like, what do I care about the most? I care about how you're inner, how you talk to yourself and what is being said in your mind to you, right? Like I really chase down negative inner dialogue and how we talk smack to ourselves. Mm. And then that very smack that's talking needs a cock 
cocktail, needs to lay on the couch, needs to not believe they can find love, and then really blames her last relationship. And that, like, so like the world, you're either, you either have exactly what you want in your life right now and you're the source of why, maybe it's you, anything good in your life is you, and anything that's not working in your life, that's you. And so now how do I break you into that? And then, you know, all I have to do is see what you're unhappy in in any area of your life, right? Is it your mm. body? Is it your career? Is it how much money you're making? Is it how you spend your money? Is it your relationship with your kid? And then and then I, all I need to do is then get you to listen to how you talk to yourself, like break into that inner dialogue. And then we'll find all your bad, like everything's located, centrally located. Right between, in that dialogue. But, between between your, your ears. Like right in that third eye of yours, <laughs> which is where you try to locate them. Right. Right. Like right. find that third eye. It's your imagination. But whatever you're saying to yourself is creating right. imagination. And what do you imagine in there? Right. And then you, the more we don't know it, the more we get to eat the cookie. Mm. Right. So you can't change a bad habit. You don't like, so we're, we're fighting dark and light right? What's dark? The cookie, the drink, the couch, the I can't have what I want. And the habit is defending itself because it wants a cookie or a cigarette right. in our case. The cigarettes. Ah. God bless. <laughs> We've had so many very luxurious <laughs> smokes together outside by the garage. I don't even understand where Long Island and smoke, like we are like, that is like. Why is that a thing? I don't know. God, I, miss, I, I do miss them. I don't miss them, but I do. You know, I miss the social aspect of that. Yes, I really, I really get like my little cute allotment, and oh, and yeah. there really is a sick waiting for my day to come. Totally. Wait, right? will you talk? Can you talk about that? Of course. I'm super interested in hearing you talk I, about the allotment because I, I'm an addict. I can't really do that. I yeah. Don't have that bone. I tried to teach it to you. I know. I mean, I'm sure that I could now having had such distance, but I don't even want to anymore. I'm so happy with my, my I feel so clear. Yeah. So tell us though about your allotment and how you work with that. So I teach personal integrity which is an ability to keep a promise to yourself. Mm. And I also teach transparency, right? So you are not ashamed of it. You're not hiding it. You're not keeping a secret. I will tell you. I will tell my husband. I will tell my 16-year-old daughter. Like, I'm not a liar. And so when it comes to tobacco, which has been, I, I can't even explain that I was stealing cigarettes. I was stealing cigarettes. Same. At from my mom five six years old no like, you were not no, that no. young no no yes i was lauren epigenetics okay my lauren mother Sandler. smoked i swear to god i wasn't smoking them well oh but it really looked cool to me like, right what like, about daisy like really for real oh my god a hundred percent like i and then i used to smoke with my next door neighbor and we did not know what we were doing but like i because your mom smoked every, and she all had moms. this she had a silver like sexy mm -hmm. case where you could like flip it open and then are you ready when i used to get caught like the cigarettes would go down and where were they right and my i would well up in tears like such a good liar and said i was trying to save you mommy no. <laughs> yeah. She loved that. I fucking lied. She totally loved that. <laughs> she was like, oh, what a good girl. And I'm what like, a, what a love yeah, you are. What a good child. Oh, oh my dear. word. No wonder I still teach about lying. Yeah, I deserve yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're a professional. <laughs> I'm a professional. So, so the way the method evolved was I had to be like, I have to be able to live with myself and respect myself and actually teach it. So if my kid did exactly what I did, Right. I would I would be cool with that. Okay. So so how this is how it translates. So first of all, I get well, everybody bear with me. You do not need to be as gross as me, right? I'm not like promoting cigarettes, right? I'm gross. It's this clear. is but but to be clear, this is just the thing that you enjoy. This is something that brings yeah. you pleasure, and <laughs> it's, it's not gross. something that you have an issue uh, an addiction with. No, as long as I keep a hundred percent my promise and everyone knows it and mm. i honor it if i started to cheat on my promise if i started to sneak cigarettes right if i was gross about it or or paying lots so i teach make a promise mm -hmm. make it public mm -hmm. be held accountable for it right and if you break your promise pay a consequence 
And you're like, Lauren, how many times have you ever had to pay a consequence on any of your cigarettes happens? I'm like, no way. That would be gross. Like, I right. do not break promises. Right. Right, because I teach people to make promise. I'm not allowed to break a fucking promise. That's gross, right? right? So I get 13 days a year. It's my number, you know. I love 13. It's my daughter's birthday too. I yeah. love a good 13. So yeah. I get 13 days a year. Yes, five to six of them are at Burning Man. Yes, I'm that girl. I like being a 13 year old. I still am this 13 year old who has a holiday, and to be truly transparent i do not just smoke my tobacco alone i put a little pot in my you know like who like hi i'm a little spliffer and that's like call me what you want right Any, anyone who knows me knows this, <laughs> this is how our like, friendship what? began what i miss you Elena. it's <laughs> like for years <gasps> and i'm i'm completely almost over it yeah uh, not really that. but but that's me Mm -hmm, right. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually, if you hear me, I'm even proud of it. I'm not proud of it because it's, you know, not disgusting. I'm proud of it because my vice doesn't run me. You run I, it. I run it. I, you go, how come 13? And I'm like, because I don't think I'm going to die. There's 365 days. If I let myself smoke like a crazy person on a day, 13 days a year, I, I am not worried. I'm not going to live till about 104. I'm not, right? And Dr. Mark Heinemann, who's my best friend, made me go get, like, wanted to see my lungs, right? Like, wanted oh, to yeah. see it. I had this, like, epic check up check up where we like x-rayed the hell out of me Good. like to look and it, it was like no one even knew i was a smoker inside my genius, lungs right genius. it was like nothing he was like like not even one word i love this so anyway so so i teach personal integrity and what that means is whatever you're doing i don't care if you are eating cookies on sunday but like you're not sneaking a cookie because your husband's a jerk and so therefore you get a cookie or a cocktail or a, like so i teach people to have integrity with anything they love to do that's what they would call a vice. Even, uh -huh. and trust me, nowadays, Instagram. And like, there's so many more vices available where people waste their time and don't be true to their lives. Don't be true to their creative vision. Like, like, do you respect that? Do you want to count how many hours you did that? Right. Do you want your kid to do that for that many hours? Like, mm -hmm. like, so I really want to know whatever matters to you. Mm -hmm. And are you honoring that with every action you take and any area you're I you know how I say it in Handel land is any area you wouldn't give yourself on a scale of one to ten over an eight I promise it's dark in there there's blame in there excuses in there and there's practices you're in the middle of that someone's to blame and right. maybe it's, it's you, you. <laughs> maybe it's you it's really good it go, it goes it brings me into relationship too, because I know that with James and me, we've had over the years, we've been together now five years, oh. and it's still really hot. Yeah. Which is so nice. Thanks to, thanks in no small part to you. Um, we have practices in place, mm. and we actually are no longer keeping our sex promise because we don't need to, because it happens Aww. just Go, often. And, I'm damn proud of that. I'm <laughs> you insane. actually really, that's actually a very big deal. Yeah, I'm proud of it. Um, yeah. And in relationship, I think a lot of people are stuck with, oh, it's on the other person to initiate, whether it's date night or sex mm. or kindness, mm. any other things. Mm. Can you talk to us about some of the more profound shifts you've seen in your work with your clients in the realm of relationship? Yeah. So the nickname I give is bodegas because I invented this when I was living in Harlem and there's bodegas on every corner. And right. I was Spanish literally deli. gently, like so cute, like a little bodega. And a little bodega is like, it has everything. Okay. I loved our bodega on the corner when I lived in Spanish Harlem. It's the best. They had everything. And everything. they were like a mom and pop have everything. Yes. And so I nicknamed that every area in a marriage, in a relationship, right, there's a division of bodegas, right? And no one likes the division because it's not like, you get 12, I get 12. No. Right? It's depending on who you're with. Right. Right? If you were with someone else, it would be a bit different division. Right. And so in my marriage, 
right? I am not accountable for that many things, right? But I'm accountable for a few very important things, right? So I make the money. I bring the joy, actually. I'm the most fun thing around, right? I'm making sure everybody's having fun. And we're going, and we're going to like, and we have activities and I have people coming over, like, and I creative, music, happy, joy, Mm. healthy, Mm. incredibly healthy food and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then David basically gets everything else. I get sex. That's also true. So I get sex, community, and money. And he gets the kids, kids, the house, the the bills, the taxes, the shopping for the kids, the like everything kids. I have three kids. Right. That's a lot. How are they? They're so good. How's Kaya? She's his, first of all, Kaya is like a little entrepreneur. She literally has two jobs. Oh, that's awesome. And she's, and I, I didn't make her get her jobs. No, no, that no, girl like, wants to have resources. Oh my god, I get she's it. So cute. She's amazing. And then she was working for this woman who makes like who's this unbelievable chef. Oh, that's genius. And it's and it's a, a like this woman can't have a lick of gluten because she really got sick from it. And then she figured out all these amazing recipes, mm. like amazing. And then she put psyllium husk. Like it is like so healthy. It's crazy, but wow. divine. Right, yes. Mark, ask Mark Hyman. Right, he no, if he gets like, it shipped to the house. Listen, if you like it, it's so good. If you like okay, it. okay. Anyway, so imagine and Kaya's like three days a week. She and her boyfriend go over to that house. She cooks in the kitchen, and the boyfriend is working the property. Like the two of them are making money. That's awesome. It's so cute. It's so cute. And, and then one Parker. day, Parker is a straight A. Of course. Like that's my little like, brother. He doesn't even understand why she doesn't get good grades like he looks at her like she's got forehead like sick what's wrong with her like straight a and daisy makes videos every day and gets straight a's so far we don't know what she's doing yet she's still 10 so she's very cute and happy daisy's my little pet (laughs) she's she actually reminds me the most of you right gets the straight a's and needs to make videos yes yes, like entertaining (gasps) adorable Right. Can you tell, my dear listener, <laughs> how Lauren has taught me to laugh at myself over and over again? Um, so, so in the realm of personal integrity, in the yeah. realm of relationship, yes. when you've seen couples mm. successfully making it, yeah, what is the key? What are a few of the keys? So back to bodegas, right? Which yep. is know the division of the truth of the labor. Right. Yeah. Like you're right. If in my marriage, it would be really nice if David hit on me. Right. It really, I, I mean, come on. I have a very hot, awesome husband. He's so handsome. He's so cute. And he loves me with all his heart. He is he the does. best. He is the best. But, but like, like if I, and then how hard is it to get laid by him? Let me tell you. I'm like, are you ready? How hard? Ready? Is it ready? Hun? Yeah. I'm like, you know what tonight is. And he's like, Okay, <laughs> that's it, right? That's I just have it. to like that's it, right? That means <laughs> we both will be showering yes. and meeting you later, wink, wink, right? Oh, like meet so you later, cute. twice right? a week, three times, twice a week. A week. Twice I'm a week. not, I, I'm not that generous. Copy, copy, copy. copy. <laughs> I'm like, if anybody thinks that's lame, I'm like that's generous. Okay, got it. To my love life, right? Because I'd rather. You know, actually, I'd rather paint or do like I'd rather be doing a million other things. But I know how that feeds our connection, and I'm in love with my husband. And I'm trying, and I'm. It's not hard. Ha ha ha! No pun intended. <laughs> ah, it's very hard. No. Ha. Ah. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. And he is cu- so cute. He's the Daisy, he's the my birthday best. brother. But if I ever hope that I don't have to knock, yeah. Right? Like, you hear the knock, everybody? Yeah. I have to knock or it will never happen. Right. Now, you could go, well, what's wrong with him? Why doesn't he have to be accountable? Why do you have to do it? I think that's something that everyone falls into. Because. It's not his bodega. It's not his bodega. It is not. Like, he doesn't even. Right. So what I do is anyone who gets more upset about something. So in my house, right. I care way more about everything being in its place and clean. Right. I wish I was you, Elena. I wish I was as clean as you, but I'm not as clean as you. I'm, <laughs> I'm still waiting I'm crazy. for this. I love, I wish. I, I really wish David was a clean freak, but mm. he's not, mm. right? So, and it's like, it's not happening unless I am it, right? right. He doesn't even care, right? So I 
I, so what happens in a relationship, if I start wanting him to truly be different, I would start having a list of what's wrong with my life. And the relationship would die. Everything would start to be a complaint in my head or yeah. a complaint to him or explode later yeah. versus divide, like really understand two people coming together have different nature, preferences, styles, and that your job when you decide to shack up with someone is to really figure out how do we operate brilliantly together. So right. the assignment would be for the person listening, if you are in a relationship yeah. and you are having an issue, you know, write down the things that you feel you are expertly capable of and write down the things that you feel your partner would be capable of and have a little family powwow and see if it's something that you guys can divide and conquer. I, I, I think people are shocked at how easy fixing a relationship is, but on some level disturbing. Right. So why it's easy is everyone already knows what they're better at than the other. Right. Everyone already know if you really get it, the cookies not divided equally, mm -hmm. you then you, you're like swallow, get over yourself. OK. And then you divide up the 12 areas of life. You make the rules and you keep your promises. And you're like, is that all it is, Lauren? Is it really just no, honoring really and keeping the promises it and really being is. right? And I'm like, yes. yes. Yeah. Right. It's like really a yes. And if you look over at your, like you look over to your partner and you're like, you don't deserve it. Right. I don't like you. And I'm like, you're lucky. Right. If you are not, if you don't want to give that person that run forest run, cause you're not like, then don't. Right. But the division of labor, the whose bodegas who, and what are the right rules for that relationship? I could tell you from day you know, somewhere around the seventh month, I could tell you what that's going to be for the rest of your life. Right. It's and not even going to change. I've learned from you not to, not to shy away from that too. I've learned that like, it's fine for me to let James make the juice or the breakfast and it's fine for me to say thank you and not feel guilty about not doing it. You yeah. Know, there are just things that have fallen into place that feel really right. It's so fun. It's so sweet. It's so, I mean, everybody's doing what they should oh do. God. David and I, and, and now we've been together like 22 years and you're like, what, tell me about this morning. And I will say that we were like, God, it gets better. Is this illegal? This should be illegal. Yeah. Hi, honey. I right? love that DZ. Oh, he's, he's the best. And what he he's loves about me the most is yes. I am expecting nothing from him. Mm that he didn't already commit to give. Oh my gosh. Right. Right. And, and, and I love him for what he committed to give and he's capable of, and I am not trying to fix him or change him. Yeah. And he's not trying to fix or change me because trust me, that is not going to turn out well. Right. Yeah. And that's the real bizarre part of relationships, which is, but I'll hold you to a better standard. You'll be a better person. You'll like, no, no, that is not being in love. It, no. I hold you to, like, you want to talk to me about it. You want to hear my thoughts. But I, if I'm in the middle of, like, who you can be one day, someday, maybe when. That's just time travel. It's, it's, it's a waste. This is not your, this is not a child, yeah. right? Yeah. This is a grown, like, maybe my, you know, 16-year-old and her boyfriend could be talking about how they could get better because they're teenagers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But not your 50 year old husband. No. <laughs> he, and, he would like and, you to choose him. And not one who's, you know, really doing his best and being himself. Yeah. 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 And then here's the other kicker. Anything you want to change in your own life is for yourself. Yeah. Right. And it's not in order to make them change. Right. Which is also another, right. It's serious to get a person to go. If you want to lose 20 pounds, you lose the 20 pounds. If you want to make more money, you make more money. But you want to look at him and go, when are you losing your 20? When are you making more money? When are you? Right? Like now, <laughs> like maybe you can negotiate a deal. Like I'll do this for that. Like you can even negotiate a contract with your partner. And, and make it, it funny. Right. But you, nobody owes. Right. Right. That's like, important. It's very, it's, it, it, that's a very different way to go into asking for something or wanting something to change. Like, babe, I want us to have more creative time together. Would you be willing? Right. right? Would you be willing? What do you mean? Okay, what do I have to give you? Like, we all negotiate very well. Like, I'll give you this for that. 
Right. And negotiating isn't a dirty word. You know, <laughs> it's a way to get what you want and give what someone else wants. Yeah, it's, it's, I can, love it. It's, um, you know, I, I talk a bunch about the difference between conditional love and unconditional love. Tell me more. So conditional love is the truth about us, right? Like the truth about us is we are very conditional. Like because I met you on time, because I, you know, asked you 20 questions about yourself because you and I want to know, like there's a condition that makes us great friends. And if you just started needing me and needing me and calling me and like, and like, there's no conditions. Like if you go, what's wrong in a relationship and why does a relationship start to suck? You would go, oh, the, the, the conditions aren't clear. Mm. The agreements aren't clear. Okay. It's conditional love, right? I like, if your kid comes home with a D, you look a particular way. Right. Right. If he said he's going to be home at 11 and he, it, it's two in the morning, condition set. Right. Now, does he know you love him? Yes. Are we talking about the state of unconditional love that you're going to love him forever? But the way you actually teach humans or interact with each other is very conditional, conditional. right? If I went and got a sandwich, I expect to, they expect my money and I expect it to taste good. Right. Right. Conditions. Right. And so our depth of understanding conditions and how much that's an exchange of love like we're not that smart about it. And then we don't figure out what we're missing in the conditions and being conditional and make agreements. I see. I think that, so it's a whole verging on understanding the depth of love is conditional. Got it. And everybody's like, love should be unconditional. And I'm like, have you met the human race? Since when? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> right. Right. I don't know what, like a baby gets unconditional love, but you know, on some level you still want to condition them, right? right? So they go to sleep, right? right? So it, it's a very interesting phenomena that I've been thinking a lot about and, and where unconditional picks up and where conditional really is the basis of how we create love. So when it comes to relationships with regards to conditional and unconditional love, where's the line and what are the practices? So here's the, ready? I'm going to get shot for this. Everybody breathe, right? Breathing. Breathing. Okay. Unconditional love is reserved for people you don't think can change, right? That's my, like my mother on that subject, my father on that area. It, it, it's, it's someone who's mentally ill, someone who's an addict that's never going to stop being one. Like unconditional love is something you get. I have unconditional love for the human race, right? I want them to change. Like I am not entitled. I want to teach conditions and integrity and love in a way that's conditional, but I have unconditional love for the human race, right? I am never allowed to give up that we're all going to grow no matter how screwy it is out right now, I right. am, it, I have unconditional love. And so when, when unconditional love is actually a sign of maybe it, it's going to be 3000 years, mm. right? Like maybe they're, you know, they're bipolar. Maybe they're like, they're, they're an addict. They don't stop drinking. They have alcohol for breakfast. Maybe they really are mentally ill. Right. So unconditional love is actually something you give when you don't really think something can change. But conditional love is what you give when you do think something can change. But how does that um, jive with what we've just said, which is, you know, don't bother being with somebody whom you wish to change. Right. Like how does all that work together? So when you're with a grown up. Right. So now we're talking, I'm, when I'm talking about love, I'm talking about two grownups. Adulting. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not talking about growing, right? right? And then deepening a relationship yes. is, is really not trying to, I am not trying to make David Zander be a cleaner person because David Zander does not have that agenda. He does not care about how clean it is, he is, anything is. He'd much rather play with his kids than clean up the dishes, mm. right? He's that guy, right? And so to be in love with David Zander is to choose a man who would rather play with his kids than do the dishes, which if you knew my mother, Oof. I'm still waiting for my mother to play with me <laughs> because she's doing the dishes, right? So there's an, a beauty to the yes. man I married, yes. 
right? And that I never look at him like he should do the dishes. So so mm. you could go, Lauren, is that unconditional of you? And I'm like, no, that's accepting exactly who David is, right? right? So if you wanted James to make $20 million, you'd be very upset because he's not he may decide to become that guy one day, mm. but he you would never go, you need to be that guy. No. I would like to put a condition on you that you don't have for yourself. No. Okay. So what happens when two grown-ups get together is they really need to know themselves and the other so that they're not trying to change or fix anybody, but you're actually the bodegas are very clear. David has never really initiated sex. And it doesn't mean he don't love me or wanna do me when I give him the little one sentence. <laughs> right i'm like hey baby i right? can just see his little eyes right in I don't, that moment i don't know why he needs a tap does it does that sound complicated my tap I, no. it's like no complication so the relationship is always going to be conditional we should always know our lanes our bodegas mm. and we should know that once we are aware of how somebody is we can then love them unconditionally Yes. Yeah. I mean, when you choose, when I choose David to not be any different than he is, right? But actually to be exactly how he is, right? It, it doesn't feel like unconditional love. It just feels like crazy amounts of love. Got it. Okay. Okay. The conditions, my love for David is conditional. I do not have, I, I have unconditional love for my children. I see. And I have unconditional love for humanity. Mm -hmm. And I have unconditional love for a list of people I don't know if, if they'll ever be well again. Like I have, like there's, there's many people I have unconditional love for. And I even hold a candle out and dream for them to change. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the game of change. But I'm not, I'm only in the game of change for people who want to change Got it. for themselves. Got it. So, which is also conditional love for the self, right? If you're unhappy in your body, you wish you had, you wish you were more conditional. Put in the practices. Right. And if you're never going to stop eating those cookies, for God's sakes, love you tuss and like go with it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't like get something's unconditional, get where it's conditional, and get if you're unhappy, you wish there were conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's kind of it. That makes sense. Right. And I wanted to touch on the fact that I absolutely love your two sisters. Aww. Like I'm, I'm the fourth one. Oh my God. We adopted you a long I time know. ago. It was a good day <laughs> when that happened. Um, Beth, the eldest who runs the corporate division yes. of Hand yeah, Elbrew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Marnie sports division. And sports division, mm -hmm. pardon. Yeah. I love you, Beth, a Aww. lot. And Barney, she's, I, I don't want to say she's my favorite, but she might be I my favorite. I think we all think she's the favorite. I, just, I think Beth, I think we all like stop at Marnie. I, I think just, we she's do. just so, she's so sharp. She's so gifted and she so loves me. Mm. Oh my God. I feel her love all the time. Marnie is, how do you even describe Marnie is one of the most brilliant writers I've ever met. Mm -hmm. She's written any words I've ever said, any words you've ever said, <laughs> any words you've ever read. Marnie. And you're like, that's great. Lauren Yammers and Yammers and Yammers and, and Marnie, Marnie puts it together, like, puts it in a very funny, yeah. snarky, yes. dead on. Yes. I mean, she reads it back to me and then we giggle. Like it, there's nothing more fun than playing with my sister. I Not, really just like, love her hysterically good but she's an epic wordsmith what a what a gift and she actually was the one who ended up helping me write my parent letters oh yeah big time yeah and that for that i'll always be grateful if you're listening and you are wondering what a parent letter is wonder no further uh parent letter is what you do uh, sort of at the culmination roughly of your work in mm -hmm. handel and if you do choose to take inner you or um is it on the commune course as well or no? Parent letters are not going to be. The, no. we, we probably like say you should take the full interview course because interview. it starts to really, okay, it goes into it. every piece of the method. Copy. The parent letters come when you're ready to grow up and write to each parent separately, whether they are alive or deceased, about how you forgive, how you apologize, how you sort of clear the space between the two of you 
again, the letters are separate because they're two different people and you have mm. two different relationships with them. And that was one of the most important pieces of work that I've done in my life to this day. It cleared the path for me to be wealthy in every way mm. and community and money mm. and all the things. And to sit, Marnie worked on the letters with me, but to sit with you and each parent separately, mm. that happened six months before my mom died. You want to hear something really fun about this? Yes. The letter gets you from your freaky conditions oh, God. to unconditional love. Yes. And then you restore your relationship with your parents into and also, an unconditional state. Yes. And oh. also with yourself. Yeah. you you. Re it's literally, oh, geez. It was like I caught myself in my own hands. Aww. It was, but like that, the letter restores unconditional love and it owns all the conditions where you, you blame them. They, you feel blamed. You were like every aspect of discontent. Yeah. Got unpacked. Got unpacked and you took ownership of all, like the individual takes pure ownership so that they can restore unconditional love. Unconditional love. love. It was profound, That's very interesting, profound for me. Mm. And to uh, just kind of put some closure on that, when we did that, like I said, it was six months before my mom died, and I had we had no idea that she was going to die. Six months later, she was perfectly fine then, and at at her death, because of that letter and because of the session that we had with you in in your office there at home mm. upstate. Mm. Um, when she died, I was completely at ease, mm. like utterly at ease. The most, I, I can go back. I can see her. I can get sitting all, there. I could get all the tears. souls, like the beauty of souls restoring yeah. and apologizing and owning everything. Not because you're going to hammer one minute, but you're just restoring love and oh, forgiving. I, oh, it was, I mean, it's like, we had no idea how beautiful that day was. Like we knew it was like Hot it was. We like knew. <laughs> it was like, groovy. This is amazing. Yes. This is so great. But it was like, oh my God. We did that. That was the most sacred soul date ever. I've ever had. Ever. Right on time. Right? Like. So thank really, you for that. Really. Yes. And and for anyone who's listening, mm. um, might you be back if you don't do that <laughs> with your parents? <laughs> yes. Uh, odds are very bad. Uh, yes. Right? I You're coming back. Like, I swear parent letters must be done. Yeah. So that you, and then if you're a parent, you can really get, you want your kids to do them with you too. Right? Uh, like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. Hey, that sounds, right? So it, it's, it's stunning. The thought of Jonah doing this with me now is like a little death-defying right now. Oh, I, but great. Yeah, you got you got some time, girl. Got some time. He's got some growing to do. You know, somewhere around, you know, when he's ready to really marry somebody. Yeah. Right? I want to give also you a little shout out. I think this was actually Beth, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. She's the one who sat me down one day and said, hey, you know, sit down with Jonah at the end of every day and ask him, what you could have done better mm. that day mm. at a certain point i think he was like four or five oh, yeah. it really helped us it's helped us every moment yeah. since every night since yeah i pretty much ask him still yeah. every night yeah. Yeah. and it's yeah. rare now that he has a response but whenever i reference this practice it's because of the handel method it's yeah. it's that's where it came i from. still i do it also I, do. Ask my, I always ask my kids, okay, okay, great. So is there anything you really like wish I could be doing better that you actually think I could, right? Yes. Like, is there anything? Like, I always ask Parker, Parker, how am I doing? Parker, Parker, can we have you. a timeout and you tell me the truth about like, how's your mommy? Do, do you feel loved? Do you feel listened to? Do you feel like I got your back? Do you want, you want me to not talk about girls anymore? Like, where am I? You want me to like, tell me what to quarterback me, baby. I want to be the best damn mommy. And I, yes, we already know certain things suck about me, but is there anything I, you think I could do differently? Right. And I do that for Daisy mm. and Kai is a little funny because all she wants is my money right? And, like, and my clothes and my stuff. Right. She's like, you could be right. I'm like, come on. She's like, no, you're, you're doing good, mom. No, 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 I'm okay. We're good. I love Dude. it. And, right. She could have a very different mom and it would be a very tough life. Oh my God. I, and I really, and then when you do all the parent work 
and then you're not trying to be perfect and you mm. know and you're allowed to suck and that's just funny and your kids are allowed to tell you that and you then suck. that you suck and how you suck and then you can apologize for it and then you can just be like how about I'll take you right like it does you know so I suck because I don't really want to do any like I like to paint on my free time I'm very busy I like to paint I like I certainly will take you out to dinner and talk you up a storm right but you're if you're like hoping I'm going like to the like bumper car land or like the physical anything or jump on that trampoline like I'm like Daddy. daddy that's why i that. married the right guy right. see daddy <laughs> okay. right. Right. like can i get off the hook on that one because right. i'm gonna stay home and you go with daddy right and so that i get like so they've already we all know how funny that is and it goes back to the division of labor it does and we're all in on it right yep. and so yep. it, it's very it's um it's very stunning it's a beautiful experience to um to have everything open and no one trying to be too perfect or and everyone's allowed to tell the truth and everyone's right. allowed to screw up and say sorry sorry is a very popular word yeah. that that most people don't like it's like human if you're listening you're like who do i owe a sorry to not do i owe any sorries to whom yes yeah oops <laughs> Oh, I'm crazy. <laughs> don't don't mind me. I understand no, I did not I'm, go to Cornell. Honey. I'm mirroring okay. you. I'm, you. I'm, I'm mirroring very happy you with how smart you are. Oh my gosh. I certainly can't spell. Pardon. <laughs> that's why see Marnie. <laughs> she can spell. <laughs> right? She, that, that's why you two love each other plenty. The most. Um <laughs> inner you. Tell mm. us a little bit about that while we okay. wrap. So Inner you, uh, first of all, I'm making it for the second time. So if anybody bought it the first time, you get to keep it. You don't have to pay more money for it. But it's like I made it again because I built something and I even retested it. And I, I'm like an, I'm an anal want to get something right, right. And what I care about is that my coaching content, you can listen to it in, you know, each session, right, about parent letters, about how you are a cat, like where you're a chicken in your life where you like every last concept that i teach i mm. tell funny stories mm. fast mm. and i have killer examples from real people yeah. right and so and then i built a system where you can get a buddy do your home like literally a system so people can connect and do it together and listen and i have a, and then their coaches on you know we have free co it's not free because you paid for it once but once you paid you get once a week you could get a, a group coaching you can buddy up like so i wanted to build a world where people could practice connect and get the content easily right, right. so i've been chasing this for I don't know, yeah. as long as i've been alive it feels like Anyway, so and it's inner, it and inner it's you and it's fine. And, and I also was, you know, um, not a hundred percent willing to be my funny voice, right? I was like trying to make it for everybody, like a little nice, oh, I see, I see. right? So, you know, so I, I now officially teach that sometimes women can be un conscious right mm, and mm. i teach higher consciousness like like and did and, you just and, say that i did and i That's love it definitely marnie right no, we, it's totally marnie right but it's but it's marnie beth and i right? right like literally going and then my joke about who i am is i'm confucius <gasps> right and right and and so like and so you're everywhere we're doing our so real good. get you to laugh out loud. Yes, like the yes. difference between manifesting and manifucking yourself. Oh my God. Right? And don't be a mana fuckhead. Right? Like, right. so it's just like, right. so if this horrifies you, you should run from hand down method. But, but I decided to stop trying to not cool. be so funny and real yes. and my brand. Yes. Except if you're doing our corporate work. We still curse, but much less, right? The fact is the, the work, however it lands on people, the work is the real work of being honest, of telling the truth, of yes. setting yourself up with promises that will get you where you want to go deeply, where yes. you want to go and keep your relationship fresh and fun. Yes. And, and then really having a, a, an incredibly fun sense of humor. 
about, about all of it. About what's dark about all of us, mm. right? Like see cigarettes, see cookies, see why I need a promise about how late I get to stay up at night. Like see, see my dark side being managed and see how funny that is. And how cute that is. It's, a, it's like I'm, David and I need promise that we hold each other's promises. We are hysterical. Like we are like, we have to go to bed. It's two minutes away. Okay, okay, you do. Okay, come on. Right. We're like, so are, like and then we're, you know, and we have eye gazing promises, right? Like to like no. truly like we have, cause we know that our sex is much better if we like in each other's like three, like, do you understand? It doesn't take very long for us to connect. But Wait, so, tell me what the eye gazing promise right, is. Right. It really now. is like David, David and I are so funny. I'm we're like, dying. we could just go straight or screw it. Of course. Right? 22 years later, you could just go well, scrape you're both for the hump. So, cute. Right? Jeez. so, so making out and like being with oh. each other, oh. right. It's like a really worthy 48 seconds, right? Like, like it's like a two minute problem. It's like, like really like, and I'm accountable that we like connect and like be in each other's eyes before we get down to business. Right. And so like, and that's a new promise yes. right so like you did it right so we have promises and we up the ante all the time and you could go well that's adorable or geeky or whatever you want to call it but that is us being great i think it's great it's and great. i think if it makes you proud of yourself then it works yes it really it's hysterical so and then what do i need to do to you know parker and i you know so we we i have rule i have little promises with my kids with my with everybody right because i need them yep I usually ask my guests three of the same questions, but I'm only going to ask you one because okay. I know our time is short. Okay. Um, what does prayer mean to you? Um, prayer is actually connecting with the subconscious mm -hmm. for me. It's like connecting with the subconscious and imprinting in the subconscious my dreams for whatever I'm wanting in life. Mm. Right. So I have a vision for a person. I have a vision for myself. I, so it's literally I'm praying and using imagination to connect to subconscious and really believe something feels a particular way, like it's manifesting. Right. Neville. So I believe, right. It's very, I am a Neville addict. If you haven't heard of ne Neville Goddard. Yeah. Um, really worth a listen. Oh my God, I will say bad. really changed my life back when I dove in and uh and learned that anything we're saying is going to take form yeah he really teaches that imagination is god there's no god outside and that whatever you're imagining that inner dialogue it's um making manifest right it's coming true yeah. you know and and he even teaches that when you go to sleep at night or you're praying or you're praying or meditating right you're literally connecting to subconscious which is the universe if everybody wants to know where's the universe what's happening like it's that's the subconscious like right. where we all collectively right go so right. prayer is the act of doing that while you're awake beautiful hmm. the commune course lastly oh um oh my god so jeff Kras now, yes, founder of Wanderlust. Oh my goodness! Dear, First of dear, all, I have, dear friend he loves forever. You like, I I've love never that guy. got, I've never hung with him or really understood no, no. him. He's the best. I had so much fun. I'm like, oh my god, he's my like. The best. How do I how do I like figure out how to play with him more? Totally. He's so good. Totally. Anyway, so I got to go to their new like their new digs, yep. their new place. You get it's into the shed. <gasps> the whole place is just. I'm so impressed with them and their devotion to bringing good content to people. Yep. It's so moving. I yep. just want to like, you know who else? Uh, Scott Schwenk is also doing a course with them too. I don't know who Sh I don't know. Scott is. is amazing breathwork teacher. Oh. Yes. If you get a chance to work with him, you should. Oh. Um, anyway, so you got up to the shed, you recorded. I, did I recorded a course Great. that I'm very proud of. So Great. It's like a hack into my inner you, like it's chunks, like little chunks of it. So that I, like ah. a three hour little chunked out, cute, like good, best in class um, video. So if you'd rather watch Oh, wow. Me, you did video. I did. I did video. Right. And I love that. Right. Cute. So, and it's really, that's really a fun upgrade. Right. For sure. So they, so it's a video course and mm -hmm. it's cheap. 
Um, and it's, you know, I think it's about probably over like a half hour over a bunch of days. Great. And it's my, it's, it's, um, you know, if there's like a hundred percent is inner you, it's got about a, it's like at a 40, 45% of inner you content. Like it's got some real good, important pieces. That's good. And it's excellent. Tremendous. So I recommend people go to that, but I recommend people just get into commune, yeah, right? Yeah. Because that's also building just, yeah. you know, higher consciousness yeah. to, to sound a little hokey, but they are all over that. No, you know what? This is a this is a crew of people our age who have been in this work for 20, 25, mm -hmm. 30 years, who have had access to all the best teachers, who are now having the means to disseminate the information mm. in a really good way. So yeah. I'm excited. I'll be sure if you're listening and curious, I'll be sure to include a link to this course and to other courses on commune in the show notes. So you can just look at practiceu.com if you're listening on Apple, or you can look at the show notes uh, right on the podcast app that you're using and we'll have all the information there. Awesome. Yeah. Um, lastly, just want to say thank you. Um, many years ago, you, you gave me a number and you said, I want this amount in your bank account by this time. And I was like, fuck you a profound fingers up i am never that is never going to happen no I'm no no teacher. i'm a yoga teacher <laughs> i don't want that money i don't need that money and ever since then with your help and with some other really smart friends i've been able to rewrite that whole story of money i've been able to rewrite my relationship to pretty much everything in my life mm. including myself i have you to thank mm from that one lunch mm. at what's it called? I don't know. Where were we? Thanks, Jeff Saint Burroughs. Thank you, Jeff Burroughs, for introducing us. And um, we were sitting at lunch when Lauren just called my ass out. <laughs> yeah. And the rest is history. And now there's, you know, so many more times that number. Mm. Um, and, and you I'm, look awesome. You don't, you have not aged, I swear to God. Well, that's because I stopped fucking smoking. Oh, well, I obviously... So, it's the best. <laughs> no, not, days. if I could My smoke 13, 13 days, days a year, I, it wouldn't not, register. It's not registered. It's I fine. was smoking a lot more than 13 you days really, a year. You really had lots of numbers. Moving. Yes. Yes, you did. So it's just a big uh, thank you. I love you so much. Uh, like, it means the world to me that you were able to come on, and uh, I'm so happy to share you. Uh, I, you know, I'd go anywhere to be with you anytime. Forever. Remember that time in Spain? Ah, uh, <laughs> was that the best? <laughs> Best, the only. Ah, oh, that green light that we saw. I know. That I do. Wow. What was that? The Costa Brava it, gave us a message. It was. It was intense. It was beautiful. It really was. There's. There was a name for that thing. Do you remember what it was? It's like a. Fa it's an actual real thing that happens out in the sea. It is. It's a real name that we saw something green fly. It's something. Anyway. What I know is, everything was different after that. <laughs> really was. I love you so Aww. much. Thank you. And thank you for listening, listener. Thank yes. you so much for listening. Yes. We love you and uh, we thank you. Yeah, we want you to have an amazing life. Yes. We're all, we're all in it together, we're guys. We're all in this together. Enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm.